Today we're going to look at the Material UI paper component and really what people want to know about it is padding, margin, elevation, border, really fundamental things uh, and honestly quite simple to customize if you know how. So uh, we'll, we'll look at this example and dig into the DOM a little bit, see how these different, um, the different values that we can pass into the SX prop affect the styling and uh, hopefully give you a better grasp of how this component works. And it really just makes your components that are wrapped in paper, in the paper component, look a lot slicker. So there's a table component wrapped inside of this. If this is something you're interested to learn about, stick around. Here we are with an unstyled paper component wrapping a table, an MUI table. So this, uh, just as info, this table actually comes from, or is very similar to one of the examples from the docs about um, the MUI table. However, this video is about paper. So uh, the table here is just a vessel. The paper is what we care about. We're gonna dive into these props that I have commented out, and we're also gonna dive into the SX prop and some of the values that you can pass into it. Pretty much you can pass in, well, you can pass in any CSS value uh, to the SX prop. However, keep in mind that the SX prop also has access to the styling system that underlies Material UI version 5, so you can sometimes set values that don't look quite like CSS, like padding 2. So anyway, let's take one more look at this. Um, you really can't even tell that there is a, let's see if I can get up to the right spot here, you can't even tell that there's a paper component here. Um, unless you're digging into the DOM a little bit. Just unstyled paper doesn't have much to it. So anyway, here we can see our table. Ultimately, our table component renders as this table element. Our paper component renders as a div with this MUI paper root class on it. So uh, interesting to see that there's really not much going on until you actually start applying some styling. So while this video may seem simple uh, in what I'm targeting and talking about, Really, the purpose of the paper component is just to give spacing, elevation, and so on uh, to your different components that are being wrapped by the paper component. So I can also tell you that from doing some keyword research, uh, a lot of people are Googling or searching in YouTube for how do I add elevation, how do I add border, how do I add padding and margin, and, and so on. Uh, background color is also always a big one. So you know, helping, helping people out with uh, their queries here. That's what we're gonna focus on. So let's start with the elevation prop. So I'm gonna strip that off. You remember what it looked like a moment ago, and we actually got to see that refresh happen, and you saw the, uh, that border getting applied, or that, uh, excuse me, that box shadow getting applied. And so we can actually take a look at it here in the DOM. You could actually apply box shadow manually, but you can see how, uh, I don't want to say complex, it's not really a difficult thing, but you can see how long these values are. So it's really handy to make use of the elevation prop here on the paper component. So you saw that I passed in 12. There's actually 25 values. Um, they go, they range from zero through 24. And let's take a look at 24. 24 is very dark as you can see. And then zero is very light or, um, Actually, it's a box shadow nut, so it's not even very light. I'll set it to one and show a little difference there. Now there is a very light box shadow. So that's really all that there is to elevation. Um, let me, I actually like setting it somewhere in the range of eight. Probably a lot of people would say that's pretty dark, but um, especially doing a video, it's nice to actually make sure that people can see it. So um, you can see it's mostly on the bottom, a little bit on the top. There's a little bit on the sides, and we'll be able to see that once we add some margin. But as far as elevation goes, that's really all there is to it. Next up, uh, there's two different variants for paper, plus uh, in MUI 5 you can actually make custom variants, usually for like buttons, but I don't, I expect you can make one for paper just fine. So I've added that outline variant. Uh, might not be able to see it very much without margin on there, but now we've got some border down here. So good thing we have DevTools open. Uh, we can see that border. Yeah, you can see it when I strip it off there. Let me remove that, and there we go. No more border. So I just was double checking there to make sure there wasn't a border by default on the paper component. So we have the outline variant. 
Um, another way that you could do that, and with more control if you wanted, is you can just manually pass in a border via the SX prop. Um, it, it can be whatever you want it to be. So obviously I've got this just solid black. Um, there, the outline variant was a little bit lighter of a shade than that. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna strip the border off there and just go back to that, that outline variant. Um, so next up, let's take a look at the spacing properties. So when I say spacing, as far as the paper component is concerned, that's gonna mean padding and that's gonna mean, mean margin. So let me move my margin up here. Um, first things first, let's add that margin in. And you can see that was a pretty sizable margin that I added in. So I've got a value of eight. Don't be confused that I've got elevation value of eight with uh, elevation at zero through 24, but um, that is not the case with margin. So and off the top of my head, I don't remember how high up the margin goes, but having a value of eight, it's showing it at 64. Maybe, let's see, okay, value of four is margin 32. Let's add in five, it doesn't, there, there we go, at 40. Okay, so anyway, I've put an eight on here just to give it quite a bit of spacing. I've got a blog post that um, you can find any of the code that we look at, you can find it in that blog post. And actually have a couple different paper components wrapping identical tables. And part of the reason I have this big margin on here is so that you can um, just see those different tables, those different paper components easily. But anyway, um, that's really all that there is to the margin, of course, with it set to a value of eight, then that is actually margin top, right, bottom and left, all of the same value. So keep that in mind. Um, oops, here we go, padding. Let's take the comment off there. You can do it, I know you can. Helps if we have our comments on here. I mean, our, our commas on here. Now I've done it. There we go. All right, so lost my location in DevTools. How sad. Anyway, so you can see right here, uh, we've got some margin. Let's actually take a look at our computed here. So we can still see we've got that margin of 64. We've got that border of one. And now we've got this padding of 16, and I like how DevTools, DevTools is really slick. So anyway, we've got padding of 16 right there that you can see. Um, now there's only one thing left that I wanna show in this video, and I'm actually going to add a background color of blue. So this is interesting. The paper has padding of 16, and that is actually where we can see the background color for the paper. It's actually just in that 16 px all around. It's not in the margin. Um, it's in that padding. So the table is over. It, it's a child of the paper component. It's kind of in front of the paper component, so to speak. So you cannot see the background color through the table. It's only in that padding. So hopefully that also kind of gives you a, a good example of how um, all these values play together, how a wrapping component, um, background color, and padding work, because that's very important to understand. So anyway, I hope that this video was helpful. If you have any questions about the code, take a look at my blog post, and I will have a link to that in the video details in the video description.